This year I made a prediction. The in-person Pokemon Go Fest events will tower in comparison over the global Pokemon Go Fest event that we all played. And today we find out if I was right. Yesterday I played Pokemon Go Fest Berlin, which was the first in-person Go Fest since 2019. Vibes were high, shinies were everywhere, but was it really that much better than the global Go Fest we all played? Global Go Fest, by the way, had a lot of complaints about shinies, and Niantic even admitted to lowering the rates. So, let's compare the two. Starting off with total time played, how many hours did players get during the global one that we all played and the in-person one that will happen in Seattle and Japan as well. For the Global Go Fest, day one was eight hours, and day two was eight hours for a combined massive 16 hours of gameplay, and this is not including the wrap-up event that's happening in August. In Berlin, if you had early access, you got a total of nine hours of gameplay, which means the Global event had seven more hours of total play, conveniently from anywhere you want in the world. Now looking at new Pokemon released. The Global event had Shaman, Nihiligo, and technically Grassadia Pikachu, and Berlin had had a different form of Shaman, Feromosa, the Ultra Beast, which you could get with the brand new Beast Ball, very cool feature, Grace City of Pikachu, and Mo Rodom out of Snapshots. Pretty much the exact same, except Mo Rodom is a really cool extra addition, since we'll probably only ever see it during the in-person Go Fests in 2022, and like, never again. New shiny Pokemon released. The global event saw a lot of new shinies introduced, including Grisidia Pikachu, Shroomish, Breloom, Numel, Camerupt, got those, Carablast, and Escavalier, got those, Axu, Fracture, and Haxorus got two mega hyped. Shelmet, Excelgore, got him, and Unknown B. Berlin also got a couple new shinies. Technically sorta Gressidia of of Pikachu, which I did get. Also technically sorta Unknown B, but not really. Cabo Hat Snorlax, got three. Fungus and Amoongus, Panseer and Semiseer, got him. So the global technically had eight more new shiny Pokemon releases. Event bonuses. If you played the global event, you got nine free raid passes, increased Team Rocket, and two times mysterious component drops. And Berlin similarly was the same exact thing, except you got six special trades and reduced Stardust for trades, which was huge, although I only traded once. Eggs, none. No special hatches for Berlin or Global, none. Special research. Global, the rewards were amazing. And likewise with Berlin, the special research gave insane rewards. Honestly, both events were pretty much worth the money spent in just special research items alone. Raids. The better raids happening during Global Go Fest on day one were Axu, Pikachu, Kyogre, and Groudon, and day two included Axu, Rockruff, Pikachu, Snorlax, Dredagon, and Nihiligo. Berlin had similar but different Rates. Berlin saw Pikachu, Axu, Rockruff, Snorlax, Dredagon, Cresselia, and Darkrai. But the huge difference with the Berlin Go Fest event is that the raids that happened during the event are happening all weekend long here in the city of Berlin. So instead of wasting time on raids while Pokemon Go Fest spawns are happening for you, you can just wait until your event is over or until the next day and bang out raids then. But I will say for Global Go Fest to have Nihiligo in raids was really, really big because it was a good Ultra Beast, and you could only get one Feromosa during Berlin Go Fest. Spawns. On Incense, Global Go Fest had rare spawns like Axu, Galarian Duramaka, Clink, Torkoal, and Tropius. But in Berlin, the spawns you got in your Incense just depended on where you were in the park, what habitat you were physically in. And then for the wild spawns, Global Go Fest Day 1 obviously had rotating habitats, which means if you wanted to hunt a specific shiny Pokemon like Binacle, you had to wait until the Binacle hour happened and Binacle was spawning around you, and then you had to hope that you found enough Binacle to get your shiny. And day Two, all of the spawns were just randomly happening and the shiny rates were nerfed. But in Berlin, the in-person Go Fest, it was a way different experience. The spawns were locationally based, not time-based. So if you wanted to find your precious shiny binacle, all you had to do was just go into the habitat where it was spawning and hang around there until you got the shiny, which I did. In the Berlin Go Fest video, I talked a lot about the biggest difference really between in-person Go Fest and global Go Fest was the ability to target hunt the Pokemon you wanted. It's way more fun to hang out in certain habitats that have spawns that you're looking for than and just to randomly go through spawns throughout the day. And typically you end the event a lot more satisfied with what you caught because you were able to target the Pokemon that you wanted rather than just catching whatever was spawning for you at the time. Although with the global event, you could catch these Pokemon from anywhere you wanted in the world. Whereas obviously with the in-person events, you have to travel to the area. Pros and cons. Unknown. I wanted to talk about unknown in their own little category because it was the biggest difference between the two events, honestly. Unknown are the rarest Pokemon in the game, obviously, and their shinies are super soft after. I myself did like 200 unknown raids for unknown F. <laughs> they spawned and could be shiny at both events, but in extreme extremely different ways. For the global Go Fest unknowns, there were four unique ones spawning, but unknown only spawned on incense and it didn't happen all that often. Getting a shiny unknown during the Global Go Fest was literally impossible. We had a group of four of us who played the entire weekend and only one of us caught one shiny unknown and it fled, unfortunately. <laughs> but obviously with the rarity of shiny unknown and Pokemon Go probably wanting to keep shiny unknown rare, 
nerfing the spawn and shiny rates for it on like a global event kind of makes sense, I guess. But in Berlin, there were eight unique unknown spawning. They spawn semi-frequently in the wild and on your incense. You could definitely find them, sort of. But the big thing, every hour for two minutes, every spawn in the entire park changed to only unknown spawns. So if you had full access, you had nine chances or exactly 18 full minutes of unknowns <laughs> spawning everywhere. And there was a trick. If you found a shiny Pokemon minutes before the unknown started spawning, you could flee from that Pokemon, wait until the spawns change over to unknown and then click on that same exact spawn to re-encounter the shiny as a shiny unknown. I tried that and I failed. In Berlin, pretty much every single person I talked to had at least one shiny unknown, which felt good considering this was a go-fest in-person event that people had to travel and spend a lot of money to go to. Unique Pokemon spawns. Global go-fest had a total of 69 unique Pokemon spawning. Nice. 44 of which could be shiny. And then Berlin in-person go-fest had a total of 79 Pokemon spawning. 70 of which could be shiny. That is 10 more unique spawns and 26 more possible shiny Pokemon in the wild at GoFest Berlin. That is a massive difference. And as for my personal haul, Global GoFest, I got a total of 30 shinies, including some bangers like Aksu, Shelmet, Numel, and Weasel. In Berlin, I got 51 total shinies, including two unknown, Cowboy Hat, Snorlax, Pansir, Mantine. And remember, we played 16 hours for the Global Go Fest and nine for the in-person. So for me, like I predicted, in-person Go Fest was way better than the global one, and it makes sense. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some other seasoned Pokemon Go creators thought of the two events. Zoe. Yes, okay, so this for Global like Go Fest, I like that it's accessible, easy. everyone can play it wherever you are yeah, in the world, like you can you can do something for it. But in person, you can like just hang out in a biome that you want to do and just like grind Snorlax all day. You don't have to be like, oh no, my hour's done, Ripperoni. So I, I do like the in-person ones a bit more, yeah. Tom, yo. Global oh. Go Fest versus in-person Go Fest. Oh, in-person, way better. Way better because it's just being back with the community. Everyone that's doing it is playing the game. You're not events. You're not usually with people that aren't playing. So that way you can kind of compare your experiences, have fun, be safe, and have a good time in general. You know, Love just being that. able to like just compare your hauls and meet up with everybody. It's like, what do you got today? What do you got? It's just it's the community feeling, and being able to explore different like areas of the world too. So. Love yeah. it. Yeah. I, I think the best thing about a an in person go fest is just I mean, can you see all these people? We're just hanging out with friends all day. Like I didn't get that many shinies, I'll be honest. But like we're standing under a tree, hiding from the rain, eating donut kebab. I'm like I don't know. I feel like you just don't really get that experience with this many people at a at a global. So I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know in the comments, what do you think of these two events? And click the other video on screen. It's a banger. See you in there.